Get on to rock, get up to burn, stand with the pride and burn for your desire. One day I noticed that my life was broken. It was not me who was controlling. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Mid Atlantic Modeling League's Dungeon Bowl. It is the semi finals here in the final open competition of the season, and it is four superb teams up to bat. Tonight, we're going to have two of the best. It's going to be the Dinnerbell Darlings versus the Masters of Mammal Dog, the Minotaur versus El Nuberino Dwarves versus Dark Elves. It is a classic matchup. We'll get right into it, but first let's take a look at the bracket. Finishing out regular play here in the Dungeon Bowl in the top seed is Merrick's friendly neighbor Kaiju. That's a Lizardmen team. They'll be up against the Mootland Scout Troop number 079, a halfling team coached by Artificial Bunny as the fourth seed. That'll be later this week. SP Beaver, thank you so much for the sub. I appreciate it very much. <laughs> Halflings are fine. <laughs> the Dinnerbell Darlings, uh, they were favored as top seed, but uh, man, this has been a very, very competitive Dungeon Bowl. They uh, advance to the semifinals here as second seed. That's uh, Doug the Minotaur's Dwarven team. He'll be up against the Masters of Mammal tonight. Elden Bruno's Dark Elf team is the third seed. Whoever wins tonight will be advancing to the Blood Bowl. The Dinnerbell Darlings already have their invitation. Doug the Minotaur looking to to keep someone out with a win tonight. Also looking to get another championship under his belt, if at all possible. He'll be playing, he'll be playing. <laughs> One of these two teams <laughs> will be playing, I guess the winner of the Friendly Neighbor Kaju versus the Mootland, uh, Mootland Scout Troop match later this week. But tonight it's going to be Dwarves versus Elves. Dinnerbell Darlings being the top seed. They're going to be the home team this evening. They're coming out of a TV of 1680. He's got two rerolls on Oppo and 12 fan factor. My goodness gracious. Two runners, a troll slayer, two blitzers, and a bunch of long beards on this roster this evening. Just 11 players, but that's generally fine for a dwarven team. The two runners, Kevin Bacon, level six, Guac Holiday, level four. They've been here all season long. They have been injured. Kevin Bacon has damage back. Guac Holiday has a, a injured smash knee, I believe it is. Oh boy, I I, <laughs> I think Elder Burrito, if he can take those runners out of the, out of the game, he's gonna be cheering, <laughs> and everyone across the globe will hear it. <laughs> These two runners, uh, yeah, with the with the injury here, you can see it's a, a niggling injury, so they're gonna get a, a plus one to any injury roll that is made against them. The problem is making the injury roll, right? They have fixed skulls. They have an AV of eight, which is pretty average, but uh, they both have the block skill and one has a strength of four. Very hard to take these guys down. And everybody else here, look at the long beards and the blitzers. They all have an AV of nine with thick skull as well. Block on absolutely everyone. Guard on almost everyone. And he has a number of players with mighty blow. Four players with mighty blow. He has two of the long beards who can stand firm. They're like uh, like uh, cheap uh, flesh golems, really. They uh, strike three, they can stay put, they can exert control. That's what they want to do, right? Dwarves want to stay grouped up. They want to just beat up the other team, move down pitch. And uh, I, I have to imagine we'll see Doug the Minotaur doing some of that tonight. But he, and not to be outdone, he's going to be against this dwarf elf. Dork elf. <laughs> 
<laughs> Dork Elf Team, also known as the Dark Elf Team, coached by Elder Marina and Masters of Mammal, coming in at a massive, a whopping, look at this, 1990 TV, the highest TV left in the Dungeon Bowl. He has a 13 player roster. We'll see if he drops anybody here. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. We'll see if he drops anybody before the game. Uh, I imagine he might not. Um, but we'll see we'll see what El Nivarino wants to do with the TV game and the, and the petty cash game here. He has two witch elves. He has all four blitzers. He has a bunch of linemen and he picked up an assassin. Many faces, the level one assassin made his debut in week seven here in the Dungeon Bowl. And uh, he'll be he'll be back to do some stabbing here this evening. Three team rerolls, one oppo and nine fan factor for the Masters of Mammal. You can see Skeletor against all odds. He's remained on this roster and he's still alive. He's a blodger with sidestep. He's injured, he lost a point of AG. Still making it work. Tila, the level four witch elf. So these witch elves have frenzy, they have dodge, they have jump up. Tila is a blodger, she has sidestep, she has tackle. And then the sorceress has picked up Juggernaut as well. Uh, and, and wrestle, not bad at all. He has He-Man who has mighty blow and then uh, these blitzers, right? These blitzers become blodgers very, very quickly. He's got two linemen who have uh, wrestle and dodge as well. Arkville, the level four lineman, has picked up an extra point of AG. He has block, he has sure hands. And then of course, Whiplash, the number 14 lineman has picked up an extra point of strength. How do these teams play tonight? Very, very classic matchup. Uh, we got into it a little bit with the Dinner Bell Darlings. They're, uh, they're a bashy team. They're very slow. They're very bashy. And they're gonna try to bash down pitch. Uh, very hard to remove dwarves from the pitch and uh, they want to stay grouped up. So you can see, because they want to stay grouped up, he's picked up guard on everybody. He wants to be getting those two die blocks. He wants to be getting those three die, three die blocks. And if he can open up a hole, he'll move his cage down pitch. Not much of a threat of passing tonight, although we've seen Doug Minotaur do it before with success. Of course, anybody can pass. It's just a mechanic. But typically, we don't see uh, a team like the Dwarves passing. They don't have passing skills to make passing safe they don't have a high ag to make passing safe he does have general so with the uh, ag of four however uh doug the minotaur is going to be making use of block guard and mighty blow and he's going to be trying to remove as many people from the pitch as he can against this elven team this is uh elves tend to be weak the dark elf team not that weak they have an ag of Eight almost across the board. The Witch Elves have only the AV of seven. He also has the Assassin that has an AV of seven as well. That will make them natural targets. Uh, that low AV, you want to try to get them off the pitch. Plus the Witch Elves are big threats, right? The Witch Elves have Frenzy, uh, one of which is a Blodger. Um, having the block skill, rolling basically uh, two block, two sets of block dice if you need it. Very, very strong. Um, provided your player doesn't get pushed out of position. Whenever you're up against a Frenzy player, as El Nuvarino is as well, you can see the single Troll Slayer for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Uh, rookie, rookie to the team, Leftovers, number four here. He's got Frenzy as well. Frenzy uh, allows you to take a follow-up block if your first block just results in a push. You must follow up and you must take the second block, but you have to be careful that that second block doesn't result in an uphill block or, or a one die block or something less than you desire. And you also have to be careful that your player's not getting pulled out of position. Can you afford to have your player move two spaces? If you can't, you really gotta reconsider that frenzy block. But if it works out and if your, your tactics have been sound, you're getting more dice, right? Hopefully you're getting double the dice. And when you're a team like the Dinner Bell Darlings, that's great. You wanna be removing players as much as possible. The Masters of Mammal being an elven team, they are defined by their AG of four. Dark Elves, a lot more resilient than most elves. They have AG eight, as we mentioned before, a few players with AV seven. He's made Tila a lot more resilient as a blodger and sidestep. Blodge means that only a pal is gonna knock down Tila and sidestep means that he can avoid chain blocks, right? He can uh, force Doug the Minotaur to take the one block, and if it doesn't work out, Tila's just gonna sidestep away. Sidestep can also be used to get some free movement. So if Tila has the ball, Doug the Minotaur is gonna have to be real careful about taking a block on Tila. Um, if it doesn't work out, if you don't get that pal, Tila just might take one step closer to the end zone. El Nuverino, with all this AG, he is going to want to score. He can score with as little as four players, five players, 
Uh, you don't need a lot of players as an Elven team to score. AG4, super, super strong in this version of the game. Uh, you, you make lots of agility rolls, and AG4 effectively means any positive roll you have um, is, is going to be a 2+. plus. So a straight AG4 roll would just be a 3+. plus. You'll see that with a leap. Uh, but most rolls give you a plus one just for attempting it. So a dodge, for instance, will make it a two plus. <laughs> the ranger says three. You only need three elves. <laughs> I stand corrected. You only need three elves. <laughs> the masters of mammal, once they have the ball, it'll be very easy for them to score. They can threaten the pass. They can threaten the run. They can threaten both at the same time to split up those dwarves. And dwarves hate being split apart. That's what Elden Marine is going to try to do tonight. Um, if he's on defense... He will try to take the two die blocks if he can. You can see he's got a number of players with block. He has six players with the block skill. That's not bad at all. If those don't work out, he does have whiplash with a strength of four. And if that doesn't work out, he can dodge away for two plus, no problem. He can hold these dwarves to just the blitz. He does have many faces with stab. Stab means he can just go in on a block without taking the block roll. He can just take that armor roll. Maybe that will come into play tonight. We will see, but he's giving up 310,000 gold in petty cash this evening. We'll see what Doug Mintar wants to do with that. I don't think there's any star player that Doug Mintar wants to pick up tonight. Uh, I imagine it's a wizard for sure. Uh, maybe even a bribe just to, to ensure that he's he's getting the removals he wants. And he has 210k in the bank, so he could pick up a, a second bribe and it won't cost him too much. Two bribes and a wizard? I'd love that. We'll see what Doug Minotaur wants to do. But it's going to be Bash versus Edge tonight. Bash versus Agility. Uh, we'll see who wins. Both of these coaches, excellent, excellent coaches. And uh, as they've proven themselves in this competition, this has been the most competitive competition all season, and I think even in league history. And I'm excited to see how this unfolds. Starting with the semifinal tonight, both coaches are in Discord. And we are in Cabal TV. Let's see if we can get this semifinal match underway. Dinner Bell Darlings, as the home team, they'll be playing in their stadium. They do have a security gate. That means there'll be no riot. There'll be no pitch invasion this evening. Oh, Hank the Ranger, look what you got. Look what you got. It's sweltering heat for the semi-final matchup. Masters of Mammal in defense. They're going with the anchor defense here. Dinnerville Darlings with a six-man offensive line currently. Uh, Masters of Mammal ended up taking a babe in the inducement phase here. So they have one babe to try to keep as many players on the pitch as possible. Yes, sir. The Dinnerville Darlings did exactly what I would do. They got the wizard. They got two bribes. They ended up picking two babes as well. Amen. I think that is, I think that is perfect. Perfect defense. Masters Mammal can reset their defense. They may, they may not. 12 man monster for uh, the Dinner Bell Darlings. 13 for the Masters of Mammal. Pretty good kick here for the Masters of Mammal, uh, despite not having a kicker. It looks like they're going to split their defensive line wide here. They put Stinkor, the number one lineman, over on the right side of the pitch. And they split Trapjaw off to the left as well. Oh, the Titanic flute can mean only one thing. <laughs> Clapheus, welcome to the stream. <laughs> Two-night block to get things started is a pal. Breaks armor, gets a stun on Trapjaw. Second two die block rolls into double skulls here. Has to spend a re-roll. 
Rolls into a push against Skeletor. Two rerolls left for the Dinnerbell Darlings in this first half. Breaks armor again. Gets another stun on the right defensive tackle this time. Two stuns. Judai Blitz gets a push result out of this. Tries to blitz with the Sunday Kid. Sunday Kid with Mighty Blow. Doug the Minotaur trying to get these removals. Good pick up by Kevin Bacon. The ball is now in the Dutterbell Darling zone 18 yard line. <laughs> Boot polish says 100 percent for survival. That's that's poor sportsmanship. Come on now. Life <laughs> says every time that the armor break animation comes up, El Nuvarino must have a slight heart flitter. I I know I do, Flame Elves. <laughs> Turn one for the Masters of Mammal now. Defensive line has been blocked down as predicted. Dwarves are very, very slow. Really, all the Masters of Mammal have to do is stay in front of the Dwarven Cage and hold them to a blitz a turn. If they can do that, they can easily stop the score for the Dwarves. The problem is the Dwarves are going to descend on you. <laughs> they are going to just beat you into the ground as much as possible. And it's very, very hard to remove Dwarves with Thick Skull, with Block. With a decent AA, uh, AV of nine, very hard to remove a dwarf off the pitch. Merman, the number 11 lineman is going to take a mark on Guac Holiday, one of the two runners. Remember, both runners are injured. If they get knocked down, they're going to get a plus one to their, and armor is broken, they get a plus one to their injury roll. Two die blitz, get things started with Tila. It's a both standing result or a push. Chooses to take the push, so he gets the. Follow up frenzy here. Now we'll get the pow. Can't break armor. Chose to follow up here because it would still be a two die block and he'd be able to push Quack Holiday off to the sideline. With the sweltering heat, every single player who's going to be taken to the pitch, well, every single player who's eligible to take the pitch is. is Gonna roll a d6 <laughs> and uh, and uh, on a one, as you can see here, they might have heat stroke and uh, they won't be able to take to the pitch. That's gonna begin it. That's gonna be each and every drive that we have sweltering heat. Sweltering heat changes this game dramatically. Uh, often, like with a, an elf team, let's say the Masters of Mammal had the ball in this half, they say, well, maybe, maybe I wanna score quickly. Let's see what happens. Now, maybe you're not so sure, because if you score real quickly, who knows what Nuffle has in store for you with that sweltering heat? Maybe he's going to decide that you're only starting with five players on the next drive. And the Ranger says, sure would be a shame if Kevin Bacon gets heat stroke. Life is trying to pretend he doesn't have a pun, but I, I see you. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> Third two for the Dinnerbell Darlings now. They're going to mark Tila. Well, darlings, setting up a cage. They're going to move Kevin Bacon up to their own six yard line. Typical dwarfin MO here. 
Moves General so back to the back right corner of the cage. Just one blitz available to the Denver Darlings. That would that's what El Nibirino wants to do. Two die blitz against Tila the Witch Elf. It's gonna get a both standing result out of this. Decides not to push. Didn't want her to sidestep away. Fifty seconds left in the turn for the Dinner Bell Darlings here. Being a semifinal matchup, there are no draws. This game will be played until somebody wins. If it is a tie at the end of turn 16, we're going to go into a sudden death overtime. Plays just like the start of a new half, except you don't get back any any removals, any, any casualties or anything. Um, and more importantly, you don't get back any rerolls whatsoever. What you have at the end of the game is what you have for that sudden death uh half so to speak there's eight turns of sudden death but there will be a coin toss to determine who's going to be on offense who's going to be on defense uh, this can be a big big boon for the elven team if they can just hold out you'll often see them try to hold out for the draw if they're if they're down a bunch of players uh, because if they win the coin toss they don't need a whole lot of players to to score so it could be an option for elden reno if it is tied at the end of overtime if it's tied at the end of the 24th turn it's going to go to kicks um, and that's basically a roll-off where your remaining re-rolls will help out um, to try to, to get you to win those roll-offs. <laughs> like this says, not kicks anything but that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, kicks aren't great. <laughs> 45 seconds left here after the clock roll back. Looks like there may have been a pause. Oh, turn two. All right, Masters of Mammal. It's going to be tough to hold the Dinner Bell Darlings to just a blitz this turn. We'll see if he can get away with it. He'll certainly try. Good two plus dodge by Trapjaw on the front left corner of the cage. They have 25 seconds to go here. He has a downed player, Stinkor, on the line. He's got Merman, and he has Tila. He's probably looking to try to get a blitz or a block with Tila. One assist could give her the opportunity to take a block on Guac Holiday. Try to surf one of these two runners. Ram man in position. Oh, it's just going to take the uphill instead. And that's good enough. Well done by the Masters of Mammal here. They'll get the push. Guac Holiday is going to be surfed. Excellent job. One man player advantage for the Masters of Mammal. One of the two runners removed from the pitch. Took the uphill, took the uphill block there, uphill blitz, I should say, and then used the remaining movement to get out of harm's way. SB Beaver, thank you for the bits. All right, one player left the dodge away. That'll be Stinkor. It'll be a two plus dodge for Stinker. Stinker. Stinkor. Stinkor. <laughs> Food Polish says, Els will sp uh, player advantage in sweltering heat. What is this mess? <laughs> Masters of Mammal now with three players on the right side of the cage. <laughs> Trying to close down this cage, prevent it from moving anywhere. Four players now on the right side of the cage. Four seconds to go. Good dodge by Stinkor. We'll probably move some players over to the left. There's one. That'll be it. Just the one player. Turn three now for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Will Doug the Minotaur commit to the left side of the pitch? We'll find out here in the next two minutes. Mm. 
Masters of Mammal. Always have to be careful of that wizard. That wizard being in play really changes your tactics. Two bribes as well. The Dinderbell Darlings, if they get a knockdown, uh, they may just very well go in for a bribe. Or going for a bribe. Going for a foul. Bribe will make it uh, virtually safe. Moves this cage forward across the line of scrimmage. The ball's now on the opposing two-yard line. Dog, the Minutes are taking advantage of this elven positioning. Dog, the Minotaur moves his cage here to try to split these elves off here. He's taking the marks here as well. Trying to cut this defense effectively in half here with all these marks. It's going to be tough for El Nuverino. It's going to be tough for El Nuverino to get dodges with these players and these players. It's going to be a couple of dodges at least. The first one's not going to be a 2 plus either. And uh, by doing that, uh, by disincentivizing the dodges, Doug the Minotaur is going to get an opportunity to get uh, a number of blocks on his follow-up turn. Minute 24 into turn three here. The Masters of Mammal. Trying to figure out what to do with their defense. A lot of the tactics of this game is is trying to trying to mitigate. So number one, this game is a game of luck mitigation. Right? You don't you don't want to be relying on the dice. You want to make sure that your odds are always the best they can be. Often that means. 100%, meaning not rolling dice at all, um, or on a rare occasion, maybe like a stab that doesn't result in a turnover. Um, but beyond that, you want to be your opponent to be taking the risks. And, and ways to do that are ways to, to mitigate their threat to you. And one of the ways to do that is through pitch control, and it's through picking off players. So you can see by picking off these defensive players here, by preventing these defensive players from repositioning, from blitzing who they like, uh, it it allows Doug the Minotaur to, to not have to worry about these players. He can lock them down. He can block them. He, he might even foul them. And now really he only has to worry about the contingent in front of his cage. He's he's reduced this defense down to, to six players that he has to worry about. Everyone else while they're still in the game, they can still be a threat. He he knows what they have to do. And he's forcing the Masters of Mammal to have to roll dice. Masters of Mammal, good bliss to take a mark on the cage, in the front right corner of the cage here. Three seconds to go. Good dodge. But is that Tila? Yeah, Tila, the witch owl. She's on the back side of the cage, and that is it. So Dinnerbell Darlings have put themselves in a position where they're going to take a number of blocks on this turn. Here's the first one. They get the pal on Merman. Looking for that 9+. plus. Doesn't get it. No man's going to stay on the pitch. Knocking down a player effectively eats up 3MA. It costs 3MA to stand up unless you have something like uh, uh, jump up like the Witch Elves do. But uh, look at the comparison between the the movement. Right? Oh, double skulls here. Works out to the block skill. is going to have a both standing result. Uh, Merman being knocked down. Standing back up, he'll have three points of movement left. But if you knock down, say, Paul Funyon... When he stands up, he only has one point of movement, barring any GFIs. Ooh, 
could knock down a Ram Man. Still no armor breaks. There's two blocks left, three blocks left, and a Blitz. Takes a mark on Tila. Remember, most of his players, I don't know if it's most, but a whole lot of his players have the guard skill. So he can mark in a way where he's he would normally not lend an assist, but guard means you always give an assist. So this is good position here by Doug Minotaur with the Sunday Kid. Two blocks on Skeletor. First one's a both standing resolve. The second one's going to be a push. Two potential blocks left in a blitz. Here's the blitz. Down to one block after this. Gets the pow on Whiplash. Tries to dodge away. 50-50 dodge here. Is he going to spend the reroll? This will make it a 75% uh, chance to succeed on this dodge. He's thinking about it. He's got 10 seconds to decide. Might have been a misclick. Dinnerbell Darlings already advancing to the Blood Bowl. They are the Spike Magazine Trophy Champions. If they advance here in the Dungeon Bowl, they're effectively eliminating someone else from having the opportunity to advance to the Blood Bowl. Boy, this is a lot longer than 10 seconds. I wonder what's going on. Not sure where, where Doug the Minotaur was going here. He had the ball carrier here. Came in this direction. All right, there's the reroll. Failed dodge. Oh no. Oh no. I, that had to have been a, a misclick, an error, unfortunately. Spent the reroll, failed the dodge. And that ball is going to scatter, scatter away from his dwarves. Now it's an opportunity for El Nuverino to regain this ball. Took the blitz with the ball carry here. He went here, but he was marked by this defender. Decided to move this way. Failed that dodge. Doug Minotaur with one reroll left for the half. They do have a wizard, just four turns remaining. If the Masters of Mammal gain any yardage with this ball, uh, Doug the Minotaur is going to be in trouble here. It's going to be hard to recover. And even if he does, it's going to be hard to get that speed going to try to score. Remember, Dwarf's very, very slow team. His fastest player is his runner with an MA of six. El Nuverino definitely thinking about recovering this ball here on defense. If he can do that and then uh, go up early in the second half, he's hoping he'll have a full roster of players to defend with on that third drive. But remember, remember, sweltering heat is in play. Every single drive is Yahtzee. <laughs> <laughs> Four elves are now marking the ball. It's on the Masters of Mammal Zone two yard line. Going for the three plus ball pickup. Works out. The ball's in the hands of Duncan, the number nine blitzer. He's a blodger. 
Get two plus dodge away. Two die block on Butch Casserole is going to be a stand firm result. He's going to try that again with Ferlane here, the number 12 lineman. Four seconds to go. I imagine he'll dodge Ferlane. Yeah, good dodge. Fail dodge by number one. Doesn't spend the reroll. And that'll be the end of the first quarter. Back to the dinner bell darlings here. Second quarter begins. They have lost possession of this ball. And they're absolutely going to fireball. They get a stun on the sorceress, but that is it. Nobody else removed or knocked down from that fireball. The fireball has been spent, and now the dinner bell darlings. Boy, <laughs> they've got their work cut out for them, especially after that block. Merman's going to eat up another player's block. Oh my goodness, these elves holding their own. They are just removing players from getting into position uh, on this, this ball carrier. Every failed block here means another block has to be taken. <laughs> Hank the Ranger says, these elves are like fast dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> Finally gets a pal on Skeletor here. He needs a, a 9 plus to break armor. He'll get a plus one to his injury roll if he can, but he cannot. Oh, he did! <laughs> he did. Despite all that, only got a stun. Even had Mighty Blow. Attack on play, so Teela's gonna get knocked down here. Another stun. Two stunned witch elves. That's something. It's not a lot, but it's something. Kevin Bacon, the runner here. When he stands up, he'll have three points of movement to do something with. Blitz, <laughs> Blitz on this uh, protection on the ball here. Five is thinking for the bits. Only gets a push, another push out of it. Two die block on Ram Man. You know what? That's another push. Lodge is very, very strong. <laughs> As, SP Beaver says, I feel like we're about to have a Scooby Doo moment where they'll rip the mask off of the elves to, to reveal more dwarves. <laughs> Kevin Bacon with this 3MA to try to play some defense here. Boy, oh boy, what oh, <laughs> what a miserable turn here for the Dinnerbell Darlings. Turn five now for the Masters of Mammal. Elder Marina must be feeling pretty good here. Not out of the woods yet. He's got lots of blocks to take. Even after moving this ball, he won't be safe. In order to protect this ball carrier, there's going to be some dodging going on. Here's a block. Gets the knockdown on Wyatt Burp. It's freed up He-Man. Might be thinking about whether he wants to blitz with He-Man or not. You could use He-Man to mark Kevin Bacon. All right. Running down the right wide zone, Duncan, the number nine blitzer, is on the opposing 14-yard line. Five is thinking for the bits. <laughs> Masters of Mammal. They're in scoring position here. They were on defense in this drive. 
They're looking to take the lead in the semifinal matchup, one to zero. Here's the dodge. That's not a good GFI. Let's we'll spend the reroll here. Masters of Mammal down to two rerolls, but none left for the turn. They've got the mark on Kevin Bacon. This seems to suggest he was going to try to take the Blitz with He-Man. Maybe not anymore. We'll see. Maybe he will, yeah. He has Dauntless with He-Man. He moved Merman into position just in case. Got the pal here. Well done. Won't be able to follow up. Got a great stun out of that. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. What what a stun. What a stun. Kevin Bacon, the fastest player on the team. He is now stunned. He will not be moving toward the ball carrier on this coming up turn. Final dodge. Clacky is thinking for the bits. <laughs> Failed dodge by number three. He's not going to be able to re-roll this. Trap Jaws stunned, and that'll be the turn. Turn six for the Dinner Bell Darlings. They are rapidly running out of turns to try to score on this half. But I think now, really, Doug the Minotaur is just hoping to prevent the score. How he does it, though. Ugh. Doug Minotaur taking a moment here to really try to figure out what his play should be. Does he have an opportunity to stop the score? And if so, what's the best way to go about it? Fifty seconds gone by in the turn. The Dinner Bell Darlings have just under 70 seconds to figure out what to do in this very crucial turn six. Big risk, too, is once uh, Masters of Mammals... It's a risk for both teams, of course, but once the Masters of Mammals score, what will Nuffle do with the sweltering heat is the question. Clavius, thank you for the bits. <laughs> oh no! Two die blocking a double skull as he spends his final reroll for the turn. He'll get the pal here on for lane. But no reroll left for whatever Doug the Minotaur has up his sleeve. Flack was rolled back. Seemed we had a uh, had a pause. Minute 13 left on the clock here for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Looks like the Dinner Bell Darlings are going to set up for a foul here. They've got three assists on the foul. Currently, it'd be a five plus to break armor on Tila the Witch Elf. Looks like he's giving up the TD here. Mark's Merman. Here's the Blitz. Two die blitz. He does have uh, Russell in case it goes. Oh no, he doesn't. Merman has Russell. <laughs> Gets the foul, doesn't break Imer. Three assist foul coming up. Five plus to break armor. Gets called off the pitch. Didn't break armor. Oh my goodness, Nuffle hates the Dinner Bell Darlings. So let's just recap what happened there. Three assists on the foul. Every assist re reduces the effective armor value of the person you're fouling by one. AV seven's an eight plus. Three fouls brings it down to a five plus. He didn't break armor, he rolled doubles, which means he gets called off the pitch. Not to worry, he has two bribes in his pocket. A, with a bribe, you spend the bribe, you roll a d6 on a one, the ref says, no, you can't bribe me. 
unless you got more money. He rolled a one on the first bribe. He had to spend the second bribe to keep that troll slayer in this game. Doug the Minotaur is now out of his, he has no wizard left and both bribes have been spent. Clevy says you can use multiple bribes. In his, yeah, you can use as many as you have, which could be up to three. Masters of Mammal. We'll see if they score here. I imagine they will. Yes, indeed. The Masters of Mammal will take the lead. One to zero. <laughs> Doug the Minotaur, all that inducement money gone just like that. We'll see. You know, Nuffle has a sense of humor. <laughs> we'll see what, we still have a drive left in the first half. We'll see what happens here and on the drive in the second half. <laughs> So two for each team, out with heat stroke here in this sweltering heat. So it's gonna be uh, 11 v 10 on the pitch, one man player advantage for the Masters of Mammal. They have two rerolls remaining, one for each turn. Uh, remember, there will not be a riot. So there are two turns remaining in this half. Hank Ranger says, any heat stroke dwarves? Yes, two. <laughs> uh, one of which is Kevin Bacon. <laughs> oh boy, Nuffle. Nuffle has it in for the darlings. <laughs> Everybody on the line for the darlings. Glock Holiday back to receive the only runner on the pitch. That's right, you gotta drink lots of water. <laughs> Bacon's very salty. <laughs> I kick. Darlings are gonna be able to try to get under this ball and they'll they'll take that. With two turns, can they even do it? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. They cannot. Who can uh, who can get down pitch? One, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two. It's 12, 13 to the end zone. So really, conceivably, it looks like it looks to be leftovers will be <laughs> the only guy with a shot, and he's gotta he's gotta move forward <laughs> the whole time. He's opened up a lane for leftovers. Leftovers can move this way. Breaks armor here on number one, gets a stun. trying to run down the right side of the pitch it looks like <laughs> not, not when you fail GFIs that's going to be a turnover <laughs> nobody's in scoring position <laughs> the Dunderbell Darlings are not going to be able to score in this half <laughs> the Masters of Mammals certainly could, though. <laughs> we'll, see. we'll see what happens. <laughs> Bobby says that one dwarf is in scoring position, isn't he? He is not. He is not the Soyuz of Rogers. He's a long beard. He only has an MA of four. <sighs> Takes a mark on the soy of Rogers. I would leave him alone. <laughs> I would get anywhere near him. Probably gonna try to block down the soy of Rogers here. It looks like the. 
gets a KO on the Source of Rogers. It's a good KO there. Good removal by the Masters of Mammal. It looks like these pauses by Doug the Minotaur are not pauses at all. It looks like, unfortunately, for whatever reason, Doug the Minotaur is experiencing uh, software issues with the game. And uh, his game keeps crashing. It could account for the, the misclick. Uh, it definitely accounts for the pauses. That's really unfortunate. You don't want to lose a semifinal match to, to technical glitches. Masters of Mammal moving all the players back to safety. Spends a reroll because why not? You've got two. Masters of the Mammal trying to keep all their players safe here in the final turn of the first half. Turn eight for the Dinnerbell Darlings. Really nothing they can do here. They can blitz someone. It looks like it's going to be Merman. Hank <laughs> the Ranger says these, these elves are cowards. Cowards, I say. <laughs> Yeah, here's the Blitz. Two die Blitz on Merman with Mighty Blow. Got the pal who get a plus one to the armor or the injury roll. Doesn't matter. He's out of bribes. So that might be the turn. They'll try to pass for some SVP with Quack Holiday. Sixty-five seconds left in turn eight for the Dinnerbell Darlings. No action yet. This might be another uh, technical issue. We'll see momentarily. Really not a whole lot of decisions to make here. Just needs to pass the ball, see if he gets another point on on Guac Holiday. Otherwise, that'll be the half. So uh, his game may have crashed again, unfortunately. Unfortunate first half for the Darlings here after the, uh, that erroneous dodge failed for them. The ball scattered out of their cage. Masters of Mammal were able to recover and score. They're up 1-0. to zero. They will be on offense in the second half of this game. But remember, anything can happen. We do have a game of sweltering heat. Clock will be rolled back a minute here. We're now back up to 1 minute 10 seconds to go. We've seen an entire half a team removed from the pitch due to sweltering heat. Hands off the ball. Didn't uh, didn't pass for SPP. Wants to get the, the SPP on Queso Bill. Yeah, well done. Gets the SPP on Queso Bill. Turn eight for the Masters of Mammal. They've got a blitz. Like it says, one blitz and call it a half, I assume. Yeah, there's really nothing else to do here. Well, a blitz and a... Um, yeah, he's going to go after leftovers, it looks like. Here it is. Stand up blitz. Two die blitz. He gets a push or both standing out of this. I'm surprised he didn't re-roll it. <laughs> He had a reroll left. He didn't want to risk it. That'll be the half. One to zero. The Masters of Mammal will be in the lead. They'll be in offense here to start the second half of the semifinal match. We'll see who's out due to heat stroke. And 
just a moment. I got so nervous when I saw four people. <laughs> wow. Wow. Three people out for the Dinnerbell Darlings. Just one for the Masters of Mammal. Holy smokes. Oh. Nuffle does not like the Dinnerbell Darlings. He says, you've won enough, sir. <laughs> enough, enough wins for you. Get out of here. <laughs> Becky says, that's what, 11v9? Yes, indeed it is. Two-man player advantage for the Masters of Mammal. Oh, boy. Elves with the player advantage over dwarves. So I've seen everything now. <laughs> Boot polish says dwarves. What do you mean? <laughs> Three players to score. <laughs> Maybe that's the Scooby-Doo moment. Maybe these all the dwarves will reveal themselves to be... to be... Wood Elves or Amazons or something. Five man offensive line here for the Masters of Mammal. They're going to try to block down the Dwarven line. They have a two man player advantage. They have both Witch Elves on the pitch. Dinnerbell Darlings do not have a kicker. So the Masters of Mammal can get away with one back to receive. It looks like it's going to be Argpil, the 85 lineman. 85 is huge. You think 84 is good. 85 is good. You might say to yourself, well, 84 gives me a 2 plus dodge, and well, why why do I care about 85? Because one's always fail. Well, the 85 gives you a 2 plus dodge <laughs> into tackle zones. <laughs> Here's the kick. Yeah, no pitch invasion due to the security gate. Deep kick by the Dinnerbell Darlings. Turn nine now for the Masters of Mammal. If he says score as quickly as possible, we're just trying to drag it out as long as possible. Uh, I would, I would absolutely try to drag this out if he can. He's got the player advantage right now. Um, get yourself in scoring position if you can, in a protected scoring position. Um, but just ensure you can score. If you can score, stall, because who knows what's gonna happen on the next drive. <laughs> Hank Ranger says that's now the worst kickoff result of all time. <laughs> Pitch invasion, nah, sorry. <laughs> Security's on the case. No riots, no pitch invasions in this game. Two die block on the line. Gets a pal. Ball's currently on the Masters of Mammals 18 yard line in the hands of Argfil. These blocks work out. He'll be left with two free players on the line to reposition. Dive block gets a pal in Queso Bill. Needs a 10 plus here. Doesn't get it. <laughs> Clive says, I want to see a death on the dwarves from an elf block. Just absolutely proves Nuffle's thoughts on the game. Can be wrestled to the ground here due to the uh, both down result. And the, two, the two tackles are now free to reposition. Positions Duncan, the number nine blitzer, back toward the ball carrier. Fifteen seconds left in this opening turn of the second half. 
Hank the Rangers asks, if the Masters of Mammal have two apothecaries, they do indeed. Picked up one in the inducement phase. Turn nine now for the Dinnerbell Darlings. They have their uh, staff apothecary and a wandering apothecary. Well, Darlings reset their defensive line. We'll take a mark on Ferlane with Butch Casserole on the left side. Over on the right is going to be a blitz by the Sunday Kid. Gets a push. Just can't knock these elves down. Blocks to take. He's going to move uh, left of the verse, the Troll Slayer over to the right wide zone. Yeah! Speedy turn for the Dinnerbell Darlings. Turn 10 for the Masters of Bamble. Tacky on speed, welcome to the stream. Like I says, I would just take the seven L's right and just go for it. Yeah, I think I think Tacky on speed's on point here. He's, he's got to get in aggressive here. In my opinion. Two die blitz to get things started here for the Masters of Mammal. We'll get a push on the Sunday Kid, the number 11 long gear. You know what I had for lunch? I'm going to tell you what I had for lunch. I had <laughs> an entire jar, an entire vat of pickles. <laughs> and it was delicious. <laughs> That's right. It was marvelous. Repositions the blitzer. It looks like he's trying to set up a cage. Thirty-seven seconds left in turn ten for the Masters of Mammal here. They are in the lead, one to zero in this semifinal matchup. If they win this game tonight, they will advance to the Blood Bowl in at least the lower bracket. And if they win the Dungeon Bowl, they'll advance in the upper bracket. That's right. <laughs> it's delicious. I'll tell you what. Uh, I don't know if you have a Wegmans near you. I, I don't know if Wegmans is regional. But uh, Wegmans is a grocery store, and they have these absolutely marvelous vegetable chips. Like, imagine potato chips, but with all sorts of vegetables. You have green beans. You have <laughs> radishes. It's really good. Come <laughs> Roll back on the clock here. 35 seconds left. The Masters of Mammal in turn 10. They're setting up a, a protective protective pocket for the ball carrier. Ball advances to the 14-yard line. A number of dodges on the line to take. Good 2-plus dodge by Merman. These will all be two plus. Another good two plus dodge, this time by Ferlane. Six seconds to go. Two players left to dodge. Skeletor, the number two blitzer. And Trapjaw. Failed the dodge this time. You roll enough dice, you're going to fail. Fail the dodge. Doesn't spend the reroll. Got a stun. We'll see if Doug the Mintar can capitalize on that stun here. Going to turn 10 now. Two die block on the line gets another push on Skeletor. You know what? So Skeletor just sidestepped to the side. 
eat up another dwarf block and show them that you can't get blocked down. You're Skeletor, <laughs> the master of Snake Mountain. Two die block, tackle in effect so the dodge skill can't be used. Looking for a nine plus to break armor here. He does have mighty blow. Got a KO, well done, I stand corrected. Skeletor, Skeletor, <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> how dare you be removed from this pitch? Oh, back to Snake Mountain with you. One man player advantage now for the Masters of Mana. Dear Darling's continuing to stay aggressive with these these elves, taking these marks, forcing them to roll dice, trying to get as many blocks as he can on his uh, follow up turn. Turn 11 now for the Masters of Mammal. They have the ball currently on their own 14 yard line. switched my car over to meters it's let me tell you it's quite an adventure trying to figure out if i'm <laughs> if i'm within the speed limit or not <laughs> so i figure i figure a meter is about roughly a yard all right that's cool and then <laughs> in my head when i'm driving i'm like all right <laughs> Oh, uh, the speed limit's say forty miles per hour. Cool. Well, that it's one. It's roughly one point six meters per mile, right? So I'm like, all right. Well, I'll add half. That gives me the point five, and then I've got a tenth left. So for every ten, I I'll add four more. <laughs> so so if I'm doing. If I need to do forty miles per hour, I got to be under sixty four kilometers per hour. <laughs> SP Beaver says, you start off with a meter a yard, you're going to get way off. A meter is like, like, it's a little over, it's like a, it's like three and a third feet. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're right. I'm sorry, feet. <laughs> but yes, it's like three and a third feet, right? And so a yard's like three feet. So, like, when you're talking about doing the speed limit, you can just lop that off and you'll be under. GFIs to get Argfil, number 13 lineman, to the Masters of Mammals two yard line. One second to go. Fails the dodge here due to tackle. That means he can reroll it if he wants to. Can only reroll a die pool once. If you get a free reroll out of that, and you fail the, re -re the, the free reroll, you can't reroll a second time. But if something like tackle is going to negate your dodge skill and you didn't get a reroll, you could spend your team reroll on it. Two die block <laughs> into double skulls. He can take the both standing result if he wants here. He's going to reroll this into a push. Takes a mark on He-Man and the ball carrier. Two die block on Ferlane at the line. We'll get the knockdown due to tackle. Doesn't break armor. Two 
two. <laughs> Here's the two die blitz on the ball carrier. Got the pal. Well done. Got an injury on Arkville as well. Very well done. Arkville will miss next game. Provided he wins this one. Oppo, one of the two Oppo's going to be spent here. Arkville. It's going to go back into the reserve box. Good two die blitz there. Masters of Mammal really overextended there. They tried to move far down pitch. Uh, couldn't get the protection on the ball carrier. Two die blitz will work out for the Darlings. Now they have to recover. Arkville, the AG5 elf. Thankfully, he's going to He's going to stay in play, but one of the two oppos spent. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> oh, boy! Used his Troll Slayer and tried to get the Frenzy block off. <laughs> Two die block rolls into double skulls. <laughs> and got injured. <laughs> That's the Troll Slayer removed. He'll be out for the rest of the game. <laughs> Clarius, thank you for the bits. <laughs> <laughs> One man player advantage of the Masters of Mammal. 9v8 on the pitch, right? Let's see. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Doug! Doug, what did you do to Nuffle? <laughs> did you not pray? Did you not pray to our Lord and Savior, Nuffle? <laughs> did you? What did you do? <laughs> Why'd you build a security gate when you could have built an altar to level? Come on, man. <laughs> Two die block on the soyest of Rogers. We'll get the knockdown here. Massive 10 plus needed to break armor. <laughs> Nuffle said, hey, hey, you want to shot at the ball? I'll give you a shot at the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Two plus dodge to a one die blitz with the sorceress. Gets the pal on Kevin Break and breaks armor. Gets a stun out of it. The league almost rejoiced <laughs> at the potential, <laughs> at the potential death of Kevin Bacon. <laughs> Fails the three plus pickup here. He's going to spend a reroll. Ball's in the hands of the Sorceress now. Well done. <laughs> Clavius, thank you for this. <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> Good recovery here by the Witch Elf. Spends a reroll to secure the ball. Masters of Mammal recover this ball. It's back on the, uh, the Dinnerbell Darlings two-yard line. Zero seconds left on the clock. Looks like we're going to have a rollback here, either due to a pause or due to technical issues. Two rerolls left for each team here. Dinnerbell Darling is a dwarven team with eight players left on the pitch. Clock's going to get rolled back to 17 seconds. Can they recover this ball? If they go down two to zero, they will be all but eliminated. Remember, the Dinnerbell Darlings, this will not be the end of their season. They've already won an invitation to the Blood Bowl in the upper bracket, thanks to winning the Spike Magazine trophy earlier in the season. 
Turn 12 now for the Darlings. Final turn of the third quarter. Jackie on speed, praying to Nuffle. <laughs> Doug the Minotaur will need it. <laughs> Two die block on Ferlane. Gets a push. I wonder why he didn't take the knockdown. Oh, because of Russell, that's why. One die block on Whiplash. This is a both standing result. He spends the reroll into another both standing result. Really wanted to get the blitz on the ball carrier. Brings Guac Holiday back into the safety position before taking the second block. Gets a push. He'll follow up and mark the Sorcerer. She'll still have a 2 plus dodge away. But at least it's something. Turn 13. The fourth and potentially final quarter of this game begins. The Masters of Mammal in the lead, 1 to 0. They have the ball on the opposing two yard line. Two die block to get things started. They got the knockdown on Queso Bill. Doug the Minotaur really needs a die roll to fail here. <laughs> well, that didn't happen. Maybe El knew we're going to misclick and just run the ball <laughs> all the way back. <laughs> Pass it to Meal Deal or something. <laughs> minute, three seconds to go. There she goes. Running down pitch. The Sorceress will mark Guac Holiday. To lend the assist on the Mighty Blow Blitz. <laughs> Got the pal. Nine plus to break armor. He does it. Gets a stun. What a great stun that was. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh man, I <laughs> didn't update the replay. <laughs> boy, oh boy. These, let this be a lesson to you. These are the dangers of being blasphemous toward Nuffle. <laughs> 30 seconds left to go here in turn 13. The Masters of Mammal advanced here to the semifinals after Donkey Teeth drew the Double Dippers in a really hard fought game. The Double Dippers were down one touchdown, it was two to one in Donkey Teeth's favor. Donkey Teeth down to, I believe, five players left on the pitch. They were a Wood Elf team. And uh, Double Dippers on turn 16 were able to get a number of pushes on some blocks to push their own player into scoring position to draw the game that eliminated Donkey Teeth and allowed the Masters of Mammal to advance here to the semifinals. If the Masters of Mammal can win, they will be they will be the fourth team. One, two, three. They will be the fourth team to earn their spot in the Blood Bowl. That's kind of catchy. The Dinnerbell Darlings and the Knights of Nuffle are all advancing to the Blood Bowl. Tini Esperanto says there's no Nuffle in Baldur's Gate 3. There isn't. There isn't. 95 hours and... Uh, a little over 1,700 quick saves later, I finished Baldur's Gate 3. Absolutely lovely game. I had a, had a blast with it. Ha! 
the Sorceress hanging out on the opposing 24 yard line with just three turns remaining. There is really nothing that the Dinnerbell Darlings can do here to, to pull this game back. Yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun. I'm I'm in a, a multiplayer game like a, uh, with other people right now, and it's uh, it's a lot of fun too. I, I really really like it. I like I like the Larian RPGs. I like Divi uh, Divinity Original Sin. I like the original Baldur's Gate games. I think the Divinity games of Baldur's Gate three are natural extensions of those Infinity Engine games. Uh, just so much fun. So much fun. <laughs> TDS Broth says, I'm working 93 hours a week now. That's a game, right? I'm very sorry. <laughs> I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> Clifus, thank you very much for the bits. Tries to foul Quack Holiday here. Man, let's recap what's happening here. These elves in the lead. <laughs> Nobody can get to them. <coughs> they have player advantage. Dinnerbell Darlings lost their wizard. Got really nothing out of their wizard. Lost both of their bribes. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy <laughs> sweltering heat right off the bat to start this game two die blitz by the sunday kid results in yet another push for the dinner bell darlings really not a whole lot Doug the Minotaur can do here except try to hurt these players and hope <laughs> hope to get some kickbacks from <laughs> whoever's or whoever remains standing here in this season <laughs> turn 15 for the Masters of Mammal two turns left in this ball game Masters of Mammal may as well just walk the ball in here they'll keep their players safe they'll go up 2-0 with just two turns for the uh uh, Dinner Bell Darlings, there's no... Oh, is he going to stall? Oh, my goodness. There's no way that they'll be able to score. Remember, the security gate's preventing a riot. There won't be an extra turn. He might be second-guessing this stall. We'll see. <laughs> I would totally just score. Totally just score. Even if Nuffle says, you know what... I'm going to take all your players off the pitch, too, to Sweltering Heat. Fine. <laughs> that means they're not dying. <laughs> it's a pal on Guac Holiday. He needs a 9 plus to break armor. He did it. Gets a stun. Life says she's safe there. Yeah, I don't think anybody can get there. Nobody else is safe, though. <laughs> None of these other elves are safe. This is the rare instance where I would be welcoming this, the heat stroke. I'd be welcoming the sweltering heat. Ah, oh, dinner bell darling is just gonna call it. Oh! <laughs> oh man! <laughs> oh, the masters of Mal are gonna win this one two to zero. <laughs> oh man! Boo! <laughs> Ah, uh, well, as a concession, that means the Masters of Mammal are going to score two MVPs in this game. Teal and Trapjaw will be it. Trapjaw's going to level up to level three. <laughs> Masters of Mammal, dominating ball possession in this ball game. Uh, they, <laughs> the Masters of Mammal, were the real dwarves. 
<laughs> SPP for the evening. Just three for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Fifteen for the Masters of Mammal. That's a good pickup for them. Uh, well <laughs> well done. A very good showing by El Novarino here to win this one. Uh, let's do an update. There we have it. the Masters of Mammal are going to advance to the Dungeon Bowl Finals. They will be facing off against the winner of our second semifinal matchup. That'll be the Friendly Neighbor Kaiju versus the Mootland Scout Troop number 079. That is bound to be a fun one as well. That's going to be Lizards versus, believe it or not, Halflings. <laughs> oh, boy. There you can see the schedule. That game scheduled for this Saturday, September 16th at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. It's UTC minus five. And that, that is going to be a great, great game as well. So all three of these teams have yet to earn a spot in the... I'm sorry. Well, El Nuberino until tonight had yet to earn a spot in the Blood Bowl. But now with this win, he'll be advancing in at least the lower bracket. But Merrick and Artificial Bunny have yet to earn a spot in the Blood Bowl as well. The winner of that game will advance to the Blood Bowl, and then the winner of the Dungeon Bowl will advance in the upper bracket. GG's to both coaches. Dinner Bell Darlings with just two losses in this competition. Um, and unfortunately, they were knocked out here in the semifinals, but we will see the Dinner Bell Darlings back in the Dungeon Bowl again, and they're in the upper bracket. Um, and... Uh, Again, the last semifinal match will be this Saturday, September 16th at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. After that, the finals will be scheduled. And when that game gets scheduled, you'll be able to check out and get alerted to those schedules on our website at mammal.club. That's M-A-M-L dot C-L-U-B here on Twitch or on our social media pages on Twitter, Mastodon, and Facebook. You can listen to our podcast, Mammal Talk, in your favorite podcast app. And you can also watch previous games on our YouTube channel. Play Blood Bowl, man. <laughs> where, where else? <laughs> where else can you kick Kevin Bacon in the face? <laughs> you can play Blood Bowl via Blood Bowl 2 and Blood Bowl 3 on Steam and in tabletop form at your friendly local game store. <laughs> Why well, thank you for the bits until Saturday night, September 16th at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Take care, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your week. <laughs> Play Blood Bowl. <laughs>